something about you on Facebook. And you didn't have to do anything, only copy-paste. That's it. That's already, you, you are interacting. You can interact so easily. You can put it on Twitter. It, you can put it anywhere. But you have to promote the fact that somebody said something good about you. And the beauty of it is, it's on an objective website. It's not on your website, so they know it's not being affected or you're not trying to manipulate it. It is very effective this way. The it's objective. But, but the thing about Web 2.0, the second generation web, two key words, I think. Yeah. Collaboration and community, right? The social sort of aspect. We're working together. We're building something together, right? That's what it's about. And so this co-opetition, you guys know what co-opetition is? You've heard of this term, right? I think it was invented here. On the Ponte Vecchio, I think there was a lot of merchants with the same industry, right? They worked together. They pulled together. They had a s common issue, a common thing that they could work together and pull together. And they were not competing against each other. Yes, they were, but they were also putting things together. I'll, gi uh, I'll give you another example. Yeah? I'm from X Hotels. It's my company. I founded that. Bart, I put him today as X Hotels, but he actually consults for TravelClick, my biggest competitor. Yeah? I put him in front of all my clients. I'm not afraid. Why? I know together we make a good team. Yeah, we can bring something new to the industry. You have to look at it. There's a great example in Milan. I love that one. There's one street in Milan. I don't know. There's about 10 hotels in there. And what they did is they launched a website together. They figured together we can probably be much stronger on the Internet, even though we're competitors. They built for these 15 hotels this one street. I don't remember the name right now, but I'll have to look it up. I'll put it on Twitter later on. I don't know what you mean, but... Yeah. But they made a website. Can you imagine that? Competitors that work together, cooperation. Uh, think about also, like, think about this collaborating. Now, people are coming to your destination. They're coming to your hotel, and they're not actually coming for your hotel. They're coming for the destination, or maybe a conference, or something else that's going on in your neighborhood, right? And destination marketing organization, destination sites, they often have this sort of stuff on their website, right? You work with them? Do you work with those websites? I mean, are you collaborating with those websites? Do you have links from your website to their websites? Is their website pointing back to your website? Is there, is there a play? No, right? In some way, it's, it's, to me, it's crazy because well, we'll talk about this more, but here, there's this copyright and destination site. Copyright should not, it, it doesn't belong on a destination site. I think that stuff needs to be spread, and you guys need to work together and pull it also your stuff to them because a destination site is all about sort of this what, where, and when sort of stuff, right? A destination or a tourism site, they promote destinations, and their whole objective is to promote this destination to increase the commerce. Am I correct or am I not? Yes? That's sort of the purpose of their being, right? That's why they're there, to help you in some way? No? So, but they often have this view of like, okay, but my site, it's my site. I'm the destination. I'm the authority. I'm going to pull all those people towards me. Wrong. That site is not the authority. Yeah, they are the authority. They can s describe everything that's going on. But their purpose was to promote the destination and increase your money, right? Your businesses need to do better. If their success is measured by your success, they should spread this information that they have on their website, right? And allow you to use it and put it on your website so people don't have to browse back and forth and back and forth. And maybe if it was just a little short bit of information and then you can click back to go to the other website where all the stuff is, the destination but marketing we, like, site. Okay, we saw a great website now from Tuscany. Oh, yeah. The Tuscany the Tourism website, they made an amazing Into start. Into Tuscany is the one exception, I think. It was the it, first it is website. The first one that we, we, and we do these seminars everywhere. I mean, we've, I don't know, we've done about 60 of them. It's the first one that we found that was amazing. There's actually a page full of RSS feed. RSS stands for Real Simple Syndication. Syndication means taking a piece of information from one place and putting it somewhere else. So what they allow you to do is to take all the tourist information and put it on your own hotel website. Now, if we know 
that they're not coming for the hotel, but they're coming for the destination, that is an amazing opportunity to work together. That's also social networking. Yeah, it's a social happening. The hotels and the tourism board actually working together. It is the biggest challenge that we see around the world. All the tourism boards are really focused. You know what? We've got this big drawer, you know, all these archives of information. We've got it all there, or maybe we have it on our website. But that's it. That's it. And that needs to change. We are, as hoteliers, I'm an ex-hotelier, sorry, um, always complaining about the big, bad online travel agencies who are stealing all our business. We have an amazing opportunity to work together with our tourism board, our tourist office, to actually get together to the top of Google very easily. Yeah, we, we've, we've got a little game plan there. If all the hotel websites would have content from the tourism boards through RSS on their website, RSS is a link. I, mean, I, I don't think they know RSS. I don't think they know it's in the okay. case. Does anybody, is anybody familiar with these little icons at the bottom? Have you seen these? Do you know that orange one? First the orange one, one is the most famous one. Now it's RSS. That's a link. You click on it, and you can pull any information out of that page without taking the design. You're just taking the text and the pictures. That's it. But, but, uh, the way I like to describe it, this sort of stuff is the oil of Web 2.0. This is the stuff that makes things move and literally move from one website to another website without any formatting. So you can pull the content from one place and whoop, move it over to your website and put it on your website with the same styling. If you have blue fonts with a white background, it will show up in blue fonts and white background that way. If you do it with a red font and a white background, you can do it that way. It doesn't make a difference. And there's three different standards. Three different things that help you syndicate things. And these are the things that I think destination marketing organizations should leverage and they should, you, you guys should all use it together to get this information back and forth. Just to imagine that experience, you know, because we're talking about consumer experience. I come to one website, hotel. Talks about his hotel, talks about his rooms, talks about his prices. I come to the other one, I see the rooms, but I see in, on the site, I see a little calendar. Events in the next month in Florence. That's, that's, that's this stuff. That's the eye right, calendar. That, this but standard is created to move calendars or things on calendars from one calendar to another calendar. Anybody uses Google Calendar? Bart, 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 Bart you're, you're getting what? technical again. He's the techie. I'm not. I don't care about technology. That's his problem. For it's me, it's the experience. One website, no. The other website, yes. I care about my client. It's, for me, it's the experience. The technology is the solution. It's, it, that's true. I'm, I'm getting into the, the, the technology again. But I think when I see people typing things the same thing from one website to the other side, Nuts, absolutely nuts. Even copy-paste is nuts. This stuff is separated in a way where we have websites that are databases and a, and, and a way of styling it. It's sort of like PowerPoint, right? You do a PowerPoint presentation, you click a button, and you can completely change the whole style of it, right? Backgrounds become blue and all that. This stuff, RSS, the other thing, KML, that moves things from, from, from maps. You think people in... Tourism and travel are interested in maps? You should be. People that come to your destination don't know anything about your destination. They could, well, maybe they know a little bit, but they might want to get to know their way around. Somebody might have created a map because they know where to go from one place to another place. If you create that stuff in a map and you save it as a KML file, anybody else can use it. It's great stuff because so, if... So what you can basically do, a restaurant guide pull their information from a restaurant guide and make a little map inside your hotel website with the best reviewed restaurants in the close vicinity of your hotel. Wouldn't that be a great service? I mean, if somebody stays three, four nights in your hotel, for sure he's not going to eat in your hotel every night. So you might as well provide him that information. Yeah? It's about service. It's about selling that whole experience. This is kind of how we see things. You know, restaurants information, tourist information, museums, events, sporting events, tour guides, all of that information can flow from the tourist board websites, from restaurant review website, into your website. And it doesn't stop there.